Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show as we get underway with our coverage of Slam Dance. The best way to start it is to talk to some of the programmers, also the manager of Slam Dance. I'm thrilled to have Clementine Leisure here. She is a Slam Dance Festival manager right there. And uh, next to her, Layla Hashemi, who is the uh, programmer as well as a uh, media marketing manager. Welcome both of you to the show. Hey, Joe. It's Thanks terrific to have us. you here. <laughs> well, I should say welcome back to Park City as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. How many years for each of you now? Second year Second for us. Second year. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about the, the difference between Slam Dance and the other festival here in Park City. Why is Slam Dance special? Um, I think the, one of the biggest things that people know us for is that our narrative features and documentary feature lineup is only for um, first time feature directors under a budget of a million dollars. So that kind of sets the difference between the two festivals, I, I would say, the right biggest the thing, yeah. Yeah, and from that, some pretty tremendous uh, people have come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you name a few that we would know? Uh, Chris Nolan, Lena Dunham, Lynn, Sh no, uh, Lynn Shelton. <laughs> the Russo right. Brothers. The Russo Brothers, um, Ben Zeitlin. Yeah, <laughs> and Christopher Nolan made a return trip, uh, was it uh, the year before last, back here uh, to so, Slam yes. Dance yeah. to celebrate that mm -hmm. uh, success that he's had starting right here. Yeah. yeah. Pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. For you guys as uh, you know, doing both programming and running the program uh, itself, what has been, you know, when you look at those successes, what has been the part that you've taken from that? What is your takeaway? How do you feel? I think the most exciting thing is to know that when we are programming films, we may be f discovering and meeting somebody who's about to have the you know, most successful career that, um, you know, yeah. that they could ever have. Just I by say the cusp here. of greatness, right? <laughs> that mm -hmm. be, yeah. 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 And that, have you, have you known that when you started programming, when you saw the film, you're like, oh my gosh, this is it. This person's going all the way. Do you know that? I going mean, in? yeah. I, th I think with, with some films, it's, it's pretty apparent that um, you can see longevity in a director's career. Right. Yeah. And uh, can you tell me about some of your favorites? What, what, what has come through that has been special for you over the last couple of years? Um, <laughs> Especially <laughs> narrative, I, I suppose. And we can talk about this year, really, if you'd mm. like. Yeah, I think it uh, would be nice to talk about this year's films. I think that um, we have a lot of international narrative features mm -hmm. that are very exciting to, to talk about, um, such as a we're playing a four and a half hour narrative feature from China called The Family. Four and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. It's a little long. It's a little long, but, but it's necessary. Do we have a break in the middle? <laughs> there is an yeah. intermission. <laughs> Good, yes. we need an intermission. Yeah. Uh, it was exciting. It's I mean, very exciting. Yeah, the He's coming from China. I think wow. it's his first time in the it's US. His first feature, it's incredible. Yeah. And you've seen it, I mm -hmm. take it. Uh, is with the, t the limitations that might exist in China, do you see that in the film in any way, or is this well, it's just? It's about rural China, and um, well, more like the uh, their p older family that um, they're in their 70s. It's about a couple and their life and their children and grandchildren. It's kind of their life over, um, you know, just the fam part of their family and. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's a family saga, so it's uh, it's interesting to see that part of China in, in more rural, remote. Well, we have a trailer mm -hmm. for the family. Let's take a look at it right now from Sunday, Slam Dance. It's the family.
All right, welcome back. And uh, this uh, film looks to be tremendous. As you said, four hours <laughs> worth all four, yes, right? Correct. It's not hard to sit through this one. No. This, uh, these, these changes that we see in film, going to a different length, things like that, there are a lot of things that kind of come through uh, slam dance that are a little bit different. Um, w what are some of the other things that you've noted that are kind of different about the filmmaking that you see? Well, I think a film like Kuro, as well as is, uh, something that you don't see often, um, that film is from... Uh, it's, it's a co-production between France, Belgium, uh, Belgium, I think, Germany, Luxembourg, and it's more of an ex it's a narrative feature as well, but more on the experimental side of things, and the filmmakers are Japanese, um, and I think that we're seeing filmmakers uh, taking risks in their storytelling, right. um, kind of shying away from more conventional ways of um, crafting a feature and going to more minimalist ways of, of um, breaking some rules, completely, right. and that's I think what Slam Dance likes. And yeah, goes. I do too. And I, one of the other things that I think is neat is you mentioned uh, the global uh, side of this, where you might have a filmmaker from one country in another country mm -hmm. filming about something that have, they have some interest in. That is something that we see very specifically. As I've seen at Slam Dance, yes. and funding from some of those countries to make that possible yes. is another thing that makes it unique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very much so. In finality here, we're, we're going to come back in a, in a few minutes and talk more. We've got a, a break where we've got another guest, but when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the other very large departures from typical filmmaking with anarchy shorts, experimentals. Mm -hmm. Those are a blast. Mm -hmm. You guys have got to love programming those. Uh, yeah, those are probably <laughs> the most really fun, fun. Um, right? and wild um, films. That Sometimes, we uh, you know, maybe even uh, unsettling would be the word to some people. Yes, right? definitely um, something that maybe the regular mov movie goer would um, be <laughs> uh, mind blown by. <laughs> right. I'm very much looking forward to that conversation. The narratives can be seen uh, each day as well. There's both narrative and narrative shorts. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be highlighting many of these here on the program. You guys will be sending some of your best over to us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to that for sure. And as I hope you are as well, we're going to take a break. We'll come back. Uh, Darren uh, Williams is here uh, in studio. We'll be talking with him, and then we'll return with the ladies uh, from Slam Dance to talk about some of the more interesting and cutting edge films that will be appearing at Slam Dance. We'll be back right after these messages. You're back with us here on the Mountain Morning Show. Darren Williams will be up here shortly on the program, but I figured we'd just continue our conversation with uh, the lovely ladies of Slam Dance, and I am thrilled again to uh, reinvite uh, Clementine Leisure here, who is the uh, Slam Dance Festival manager. She sits on my right, and next to her, Layla Hashemi, who is uh, both a programmer as well as the media marketing manager. Uh, again, uh, Slam Dance, uh, which of course is at Treasure Mountain uh, each day, much different. Uh, uh, type of festival, but taking it even one step further uh, with experimental and anarchy shorts. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about what these genres are all about and what specifically falls into them. So experimental shorts would be um, films that do not have a narrative, so they uh, can pretty much do whatever they want in terms of uh, visual um, medium on you know a screen <laughs> right so it's anything you could watch yes, essentially exactly regardless of the format or the way it's presented or a timeline if or it's anything projected and it does not have a narrative thread it's pretty much an experimental an experimental film and this is different than many festivals there, there are very few of these out there yeah I mean there's so many festivals that you know play a lot of films all over the world but not many festivals that aren't underground film festivals have experimental short blocks, so it's really exciting to us to be able to support those filmmakers at Slam Dance. And this is, w when you say that, when you say there's a lot of festivals, there are literally hundreds <laughs> and hundreds of festivals. You guys one of very few that really focuses on this. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite parts, uh, for sure, the experimental is exciting and interesting, but Anarchy Shorts. Yeah. I've been to this before, <laughs> and I have to say there were moments where I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding Really, am I watching this right now? Mm -hmm. And then asking myself, can I continue? <laughs> and then I think, it's a short, it's, it's going to be over in a minute, right? And then right. something else comes up, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> mind blown, mm -hmm. literally. <laughs> Talk to me about that part of it, because it, it, these are 
wild departures from what many of us think about presenting to others. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, um, our anarchy shorts block are made up of films that are extremely transgressive and underground, anti-genre, out of the box, like you said, mind-blowing. Um, subversive. Yeah, subversive. Could be experimental. Could be just plain weird. <laughs> yeah. Right. You name it. Offensive um, sometimes. Offensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, d for a purpose, even. Yes. It seems. Or and maybe not. And, you know, I mean, some of those films um, are just filmmakers just having fun or just pushing every single boundary that they can think of. And that's, that's really probably the most exciting thing. And our programmers for that uh, block, uh, Burke uh, Roberts and Noel Lawrence, are, are two wild guys, too, and also underground filmmakers. So that's their, their, their baby, and they, they have a blast doing it, too. Does this? When, when you're a programmer for this, I got to ask, and you probably you know them, so maybe speak for them in this case, but does it change you a little bit when you watch that I, many I don't think it changes just them. different yeah, kinds of I films? No, they're already there. They change oh, they, the program. Yeah. <laughs> they change well, film. Well, because typically the programmers from each genre have made a film in that genre for Slam Dance, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. So it shouldn't be too wild of a departure from them. very much up their alley. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> they're interesting characters, is yes. what you're saying? Characters, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to get them here in studio at some point I for sure. I highly recommend <laughs> it. Right? <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> now we're going to take a look at uh, one film uh, from this, these, uh, these two groups. Uh, the film is Blue. We have uh, a screener for that. Let's take a look at it right now from the uh, Slam Dance Film Festival. Here it is, Blue. <laughs> From the experimental category of slam dance, that's Blua. Uh, this uh, experimental category, this uh, is pretty fun, I think, for most people. This would be something that if they're, you know, if they've been to a bunch of docs, <laughs> it's a really nice way to kind of round things out a little bit. I think that um, both the anarchy shorts and the experimental short block is something that if you're trying to watch something that's very much different and that's outside of, you know, regular, more commercial, more accessible type of yeah, film. convention. Yes, then that's, you know, if you want, are looking for something different, then that's, that's where you should be. I find that the kind of interesting part about this too is the thought that you get from these. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking to just uh, move towards some different thought in your mind, mm -hmm. uh, this might be a way of start starting some new ideas, some I new think conversations. I uh, the most exciting thing about those films is that you get to see the creative internal world of a filmmaker, of an artist, really. Right. Um, and Truly the art of film. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, specifically, the animal mm -hmm. shot was just off. That's just amazing. That fox that looked uh, spectacular uh, in that monochrome. Uh, the, do you guys find yourselves, uh, you, do you get an opportunity to screen a lot? I mean, obviously, as a programmer, yeah. you do, but as a festival manager, do you get to go and sit down and watch some of these films? We pretty much watch everything. Uh, you guys see it all? Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you all are participating in the judging as well, right? In some no, fashion. No, we have jurors. You have that, a juror uh, as well. That, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay, but you don't have a favorite category for the people in? That's, um, we have an audience award. Uh, the audience award, um, which you'll participate in. Right, and we have a Spirit of Slam Dance award, which is, uh, determined by the filmmakers themselves. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, in finality here, I want to talk about what makes this place special. Uh, Treasure Mountain, it's a different place to go and screen a <laughs> film. It is a different place to hang out. Uh, I, of course, love it because after a couple of weeks here, we've met so many of the filmmakers that as you walk down the hall of Treasure mm -hmm. Mountain, 
you know everyone. That's I mean, the thing. Yeah, yeah. It's you can like, high five your new pals right. and you're the programmers and you can mm -hmm. high five Peter Baxter, the president of the festival. Yep. All equally, it's a small place so everyone gets to know each other and participate and everyone will see each other's films. You're, you know, you become you know, friends, it's a community. Um, Become part of that. A yeah. small space, mm -hmm. so. Doesn't hurt that you put everybody in a hot tub like night number two, <laughs> right? <laughs> everybody gets together early <laughs> on and becomes friends, uh, of course. And and certainly characters coming through like Flula last year. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Kind of blows the place away and you just, you kind of just recreate a new, it's a new slam dance every year. Every exactly. Year, absolutely. Yep. Well, as always, I want to thank you both for being here. I'm thank excited you. for the festival, excited to see some of these films in the experimental and anarchy category. The narratives look to be terrific. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much for the programming work and <laughs> for putting the festival together. Thank you. Thanks I look for forward to us. seeing you at Treasure Mountain. We'll be up there all the time, and I hope you do high five me. <laughs> we will. I'll take a handshake Thanks. for now. <laughs> thank you so very much. Make sure that you check out all the terrific films that really make Slamdance so special. The small screening rooms, the, uh, the the friends being with the filmmakers as you screen their films. It's a lot different at Slamdance. It is intimate and fun. You want to be part of that. And of course, the best part about it, there's tickets available for stuff. So make sure you get up to Treasure Mountain and participate in the cusp of filmmaking. Darren Williams is next on the program. We'll be back with that right after this.